Yeah. But it's my password holder yeah. too. Well, you brought that with you when we when we set them up. Yeah. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order for the Historic Preservation Committee. Uh, first is old business, and we're looking at 506 Martin Avenue amendment to an approved COA to revise the location of the garage. Okay. Uh, I recall that uh, this is approved by you all. Um, the June meeting and then brewed by the uh, board of aldermen. Um, since then, the uh, developer, Les and Les and Beckham, um, there's a live oak in their backyard that uh, they are wanting to incorporate into their landscape plan. And the plan that was originally approved by by y'all and the board had the garage directly behind the house. What they would like to do is to basically turn that garage 90 degrees so instead of being directly behind the house it is in line with the driveway this allows them to take advantage of the um, existing live oak tree and make it part of their backyard but that is still as it's revised it's still consistent with the uh, design guidelines for historic districts because the garage is still behind the line of the house so uh, uh, the recommend approval and it is like I said it is consistent with the design guidelines and with their um, reason to approve the plan. So the document says Live Oak is now part of the property. But has the property changed? Yes, they did that. They were um, administratively acquired I think ten feet of the lot of oh. parcel rather adjacent to them. And joined it. And joined the two gotcha. feet. So that is now part of this property. Uh, rather than going to the to the north of it, this simply allowed them to have a little bit larger house, and also the live oak is now within their property. And I think the Mr. McMacken is here. Do you have questions for me? I'm there. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Just that. I make a motion that we approve the amendment to the COA to revise the location of the garage at 506 Martin Avenue. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion passes and we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to the uh, uh, Board of Aldermen at its next meeting next Tuesday evening. Okay. Um, the next item is 317 Lovers Lane, uh, COA request for a new two-story residence. And we talked about this one last mm -hmm. meeting. Um, we left that meeting with uh, questions for Wade to go back and give us some more information on what was presented so we could actually make an informed decision. So, Wade, I'm going to put you on. <coughs> as well call your attention to one change that was made to the plan um, from, the, from the plan as it was originally submitted and that uh, they removed the uh, fencing along uh, Lover's Lane from the I think it was six feet in height uh, they are going to now a four foot a little picket fence and gate along the front, front property line and the side lot line so those issues with the chain link property owner um, regarding I think, the siding of the house, its um, distance from the distance from the water and from the bulkhead, and also some uh, issues with the the design of the house itself. I think that, like I said, those are in your packet at the end of this report. Um, did have a chance to go over them um, in the past month. I just would point out, first of all, point out to you that. The historic guidelines, district guidelines, are recommendations for 
you and the Board of Aldermen to use in evaluating the plans. Um, they are not hard and fast rules like um, regulations, they are guidelines. <coughs> it's in your opinion that the uh, plans as presented are equal to or in some ways better than what uh, design guidelines uh, suggest and recommend at your discretion to recommend approval of it and of the in the Board of Aldermen to make that final decision on uh, the consistency with the with the design guidelines of the COA. <clears throat> um, also, there were in the uh, presentation there was uh, a reference to removal of the you know, live oak tree on the property. That is the responsibility of the building official and Board of Aldermen. That is not something that comes under the Historic uh, Preservation Commission. Just want to point, point that out. Uh, I think that kind of brings things up to date on this. So if you have questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Well, we already took all questions and during and presentations during the last meeting, so I wasn't expecting to do. I'm sorry. I that was me who asked. I didn't know how it worked. I had a question. Okay. I did have one question on, on one of the uh, objections was the glass railing on the back or the front porch on facing the water. The, uh, the glass railing, there was a question on that. Has, has that been revised or changed? It has not been changed. Uh, it's still as, as uh, presented in the original plans. Uh, again, like I said, those are uh, uh, guidelines um, address that. And it is up to y'all whether or not you feel that is uh, appropriate or not uh, as far as the design guidelines. Well, would you say that that the um, sections from the design guidelines that uh, uh, the, the neighbors presented are, for the most part, are um, um, correct in terms of that, that they are the um, design guidelines for waterfront property in the Lover's Lane area, but again, that they are the guidelines. So are there any true violations in this that goes against code in any fashion? They go against code? No. They are the, the um, um, plan as proposed is consistent with our development regulations. So we run down this for discussion with the. So the, we we the, listened to the we listened during the the, the previous meeting to all of, all of the arguments that, and then we came out of that meeting that we had specifics uh, that we wanted Wade to answer. Uh, I, I didn't know about that meeting, but I've been informed now that I think I have I know I would like to present a no. Okay. Okay. That that's okay. up to the. Yeah. I mean, there um, there will be an opportunity at the Board of Aldermen meeting, but this goes to them. Okay. Uh, that will be an opportunity for, um, I mean, if, it's, it, if there's an appeal or if it is up to the Aldermen to discuss an item, that will be the process there. And will, that automatically, will this automatically go to the board either way? Yes, it, it yeah, goes to the board. To. Okay. Yes. Okay. No matter what. That's is this going to go Tuesday? That is correct. It will be on Tuesday evening's agenda, 6 o'clock in this room. So Tuesday night, when they talk about it, when they have anything that they want to talk about that's on the agenda, is that part? That's when you could get up and speak about it. You're welcome.
Well, as to the, as to the part of it that uh, pertains to our authority uh, and oversight, uh, and, and I must admit, I, I, I read through all of the things we had and so forth. I think some of, even even though you mentioned that they are guidelines and not codes, that I believe some of those guidelines are quoted out of context and taken out of context as well. Uh, don't necessarily apply to this property. And in, in light of having read through all that and looking what our responsibility here is, I, I would like to make a motion that if there is no further discussion. Are there any more questions? All right, I'd like to recommend approval, a certificate of appropriateness for the, um, the two construction of two-story dwelling, 317 Lovers Lane. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So again, this is going to go before the board on Tuesday at what time? The 6 o'clock in this room. Um, and as uh, they mentioned, there is a section if, of the uh, Board of Aldermen agenda uh, for comment on items on the agenda. It's usually comes at the, toward the beginning of the agenda. Uh, so that is the opportunity at that time to uh, discuss a particular item. Okay. <clears throat> the next item is new business, 802 Iberville Drive, certificate of appropriateness for a new residence. Jess, can you? Yes, scroll on through that. While she's doing that, I'll just give you a brief introduction. This is a, as I said, uh, as you said, a construction of a new uh, two-story single-family dwelling. It is in the um, RM2. It's actually in the multi-family zoning district, so uh, uh, does permit single-family dwellings. And in this case, a um, there's a garage fronts on Clark Avenue that's part of the plan, in addition to a swimming pool and detached guest cottage uh, in the rear of the uh, property. No, keep going. It's, uh, you're close to it. It's uh, page 32. Okay, thank you. Oh, page 32? Well, that's what I show. Uh, yeah, 32. 32. I don't think our pages are in the same order. <laughs> it's further down, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple okay. more pages down from here. Okay. And what address are we looking for? 802. Okay, there it is. Okay. There you go. Okay. Scroll, scroll down just a little bit more. Okay, that shows you, uh, that shows you the property. Uh, if you go on down uh, another, about two more pages, we'll get to the, to the plan itself. As I said, this is a, in the uh, Indian Springs Historic District where um, it's described as having a greater sense of informality in terms of the layout. Uh, it's a variety of residential architecture. Uh, in terms of new construction in the um, River Landing subdivision on the north side of the street and more older uh, renovated houses on the south side. In this situation, it's a two-story um, new dwelling with uh, brick terracotta and uh, lime wash finish on it. There are photos in the report in your packet that show the uh, examples of what it is to look like in terms of uh, the finish and the type of brick, uh, trim, and other things such as that, and the roof. Um, if you have any questions about this, I'll be glad to answer the more tea. There you go. There you go. The finish of the material. Finish of the of the house. If you have questions, I'd be glad to answer them, and I believe the uh, uh, representative from this is, is in the audience.
away. Where is the guest cottage that it's talking about in this design? Okay. Can you uh, uh, actually go up? Got to go back. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to give you the one question. I forgot where exactly it was in the. It talks about it, I just don't. It's on the site plan. One more page. It's on the site plan. Okay. Um, you see, is there a way to rotate that screen kind of clockwise? It's really. Guess. Proposed pool, okay. Pool, it's a guest suite. suite is really what it is. It's not attached to the house. It's, it's a freestanding. Yes, freestanding. Mm -hmm. right I take it all the construction material and everything is the same as the house then? Mm -hmm. That is my understanding. Oriented toward Cox or toward Iberville? Be oriented to Cox. The hill actually will face Cox with both that and the garage uh, facing Cox that way. But they also have a second driveway for the yes. Yes cottage, also for so Iberville Drive. It is a more, uh, I guess, a traditional layout uh, for that for the property, but um, that is a pattern set by the um, Iberville Landing Subdivision that's directly across Iberville Drive. Uh, they, they have uh, all of those are actually on an internal street, but there are <clears throat> some of the houses in there that uh, where the garage is face Iberville Drive.
you like to make a motion? Hmm. You want to go to make a motion? Yeah, I'll do it. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the COA for construction of a new dwelling at 802 Iberville Drive um, as shown in the plans. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have someone here from 802. Okay. Um, again, this will be going to the board hall. Uh, okay. Next item uh, was deferred. That was 400 uh, Front Beach. So the next is uh, item is approval of minutes from August 10th, 2023. So we have to make a correction then. Okay. So she found an error in the minutes. Okay. We didn't actually put her name into the, as attending the, the actual meeting. Oh, excuse me. That's the only thing I noticed. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Yeah. We'll correct that and uh... so when we make a motion, make sure we make to include the corrections. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Um, for the meeting of Thursday, August the 10th, 2023, with the correction we just spoke about. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item is an audience request, a presentation by <coughs> Chelsea Prince uh, regarding historical, historic districts, sorry. Chelsea. From Chelsea Prince, um, I have, I will admit I'm nervous. I've never, I don't know obviously about these meetings, and so thank you for helping me through it. Um, but um, thank you for everything that you do for the city. Um, I love Ocean Springs, and so I've actually been trying to meet with you since February, and now it's finally happening, so I'm glad I, it worked out. Um, so that's another thing just to make clear is that this isn't just because urban renewal or anything like that. I know there's a lot of drama going on. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, but um, I do want to request a change in the locally designated historic districts. After moving to Ocean Springs and falling in love with the charm and the history, I've been surprised with all the changes that have been happening downtown. I've spent a lot of time researching our town, and as I learn, I share my discoveries on social media. During my research, I discovered our locally designated districts outlined in the Ocean Springs Historic District Design Guidelines Packet. I was surprised to see that the most historic areas, including downtown, are not protected, and they don't have to follow any historic guidelines. I met with my alderman, and I expressed my concerns, and I've been trying to be on this agenda since February. An official historic survey was done in 1979 using a grant awarded from the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. In 1987, many local areas were listed in the National Register of Historic Places. However, that designation um, places no restrictions on historic properties, no protection against demolition, neglect, or insensitive alterations or additions. 
1996, as part of comprehensive planning efforts, the city sponsored an updated historic resource, resource survey. I'm unaware of any similar efforts pertaining to the new comprehensive plan coming out on September 20th. Since then, the town has suffered many storms from natural disasters and development. The structures that have stood the test of time and still remain are a reminder of the history of our town and help tell its story. I wanna make it clear that I'm not opposed to growth or smart development. As the town grows, I recognize the need for a plan. I believe part of the plan and preparations should be to keep the town's heritage and character top priority. I believe enough time has passed for Ocean Springs to reevaluate which areas should be included in our local historic district, whose local designation would, as stated on page six of the historic guidelines, place an emphasis upon the preservation of the historic character and architectural integrity of buildings and areas. The primary goal is to protect irreplaceable community resources and to maintain an aesthetically pleasing place to work and live. Through local designation and design review, Ocean Springs preserves the character-defining features that make its historic properties unique. Including these areas in a historic district would also encourage any new construction in these areas to adhere to the same guidelines which contribute to the charm and heritage of Ocean Springs. To list a few properties that are currently not protected include Lovelace Drugstore built in 1926, the Lemon Moeller Building built in 1897, the Glossman Gas Building, built in 1912. The Pink Rooster, built in 1914. The Masonic Temple, built in 1928. The State Bank, built in 1910. Todd Bell's Will Salon, built in 1900. The last all-black school in Ocean Spring is Elizabeth Keys. Two Dogs Dancing and Buddy Rowe, built in 1910. Historic designations aren't about restrictions, but it opens up a world of opportunity. There have been many studies that report the following. Having property within historic boundaries provides many opportunities for grants, tax incentives, and increases property value, which provides benefits for the people living in these districts and will help them to not be targeted as slum or blight. Preservation enhances real estate values and fosters local businesses, keeping historic main streets and downtowns economically viable. Heritage tourism is a real economic force one that is evident in places that have preserved their historic character, such as Fairhope, Alabama, and Savannah, Georgia. It will raise the community's awareness and pride in its past. It is the sense of place that encourages people to put down roots in a community, enhance the visual, aesthetic character, diversity, and distinctiveness of the city. It has been said by historians that Ocean Springs today is to Mississippi what Jamestown is to Virginia and Plymouth Rock is to Massachusetts. Ocean Springs is the birthplace of the French Louisiana Territory and plays a huge part in American history. We have a lot to be proud of. Capitalizing on that history and the charm of Ocean Springs will bring us the kind of tourism and economic growth we want. Anywhere can be built new. The thing that sets us apart is our history and charm, and if we don't fight to protect it, we'll lose it. Diversity and distinctiveness is what makes us stand out. I hope this request is treated with urgency with the speed in which the heritage of the town is being destroyed, I believe that this request should be expedited. I'm sorry I'm getting emotional. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> um, but I did choose Ocean Springs for my family to live because of how special it is. And so that's just why I want to do this. I, I, my husband's been military. We moved here three years ago. And we came here and thought, this is the place. This place is special. We've lived all over the country. but. Ocean Springs is where I want to raise my kids, and this place is special. It's different, and so I think that the people in Ocean Springs, we need to do everything we can to fight to protect its heritage, who we are, and keep it special. And so if you want to look at the maps, I stopped reading because it was getting too long. I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is what we have now. I presented I put a, uh, an idea of how I personally think it should be. I'm open. you guys are the Historic Preservation Commission. I talked to MDAH. They told me that any changes have to be submitted through you. Um, I couldn't do anything, so they said you need to talk to your Historic Preservation Commission. So I did a lot of research, found historic areas, made my own little map, highlighted things I did, also showing the national, what is nationally considered a historic district, I don't know where the map is, but I have them all. <laughs> but there, I, I don't know if you guys have packets too with all this information. That right there. So this area is showing the overlay 
of the dark blue and the teal that so the teal locally designated districts the dark blue is back in the 80s what was considered from the national register what they thought was historic and for some reason ocean springs didn't agree and made the light blue little teal area and so but that dark blue area does not offer any protection all it's doing is saying good job we recognize you as being historic but the protection that is in place the protection that it's giving is just the opportunity to come to you to get approval. That's all it is, is saying, okay, that is just one little added measure of protection to get approval from the Historic Preservation Commission and be suggested to meet the guidelines. So, my, I don't know where my little drawing is. Do you have that one? Look at, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's obviously very, it's very amateur. <laughs> It's just, I'm a stay-at-home mom, you guys. I don't know how to do this stuff. <laughs> and so that is what I am proposing. I was, um, and as you know, I am on social media, and I have shown this to people because I wanted to make sure no one was blindsided with any decisions, got some input. There's a, obviously, you can't make everyone happy, but I think majority of people agreed. I even was concerned with the railroad district because I um, had heard that Possibly, they a lot of people in that area would not be on board. So I reached out, and actually, they were very excited about it, and they wanted it to be included. Um, and so that's my proposal. Any questions? Well, I'd like to correct you on something. Yes, said please. That the um, comprehensive plan is going to be approved on the twentieth. That's not correct. We're getting public input from for the oh, thank you. The yeah. comprehensive plan. I would encourage you to come to that meeting, and if you have things that you want. Be in it so that so the plan's not being presented there. It's just they're making it, and we're trying to get ideas. Yeah, our, our our consultants, Sloan Associates, uh, we're making a presentation that evening about the conference. But this is the, the whole purpose of this meeting on the twentieth is to get input from the public about what the issues are, what kind of goals and policies the city should have okay. for its conference plan. So uh, that will be six o'clock at the Civic Center on Beautiful Boulevard. Okay, great. So um, can I ask uh, Can I ask an off-topic question or not? I don't know what's allowed in these meetings. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, so I, I don't know. So I've been watching the meetings. So the mayor had said that the comprehensive plan is the blueprint for the urban, urban renewal plan. So I'm curious how if that was the blueprint and it's not ready yet. Well, we have an existing conference plan. Oh, so, there, so, the, so the old comprehensive plan is the blueprint to the new urban renewal plan. Basically. So that's it. And they're kind of coming together at the same time, but it's not out, so they can't say the new one. Okay. Because it's not finished, because there's a public meeting for input. Right. It won't be finished until after the public meeting, and then they will take that information and see do they want to integrate any of that into the plan. Okay, so that's just something I can bring up there. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Microphone working. Okay. All right. Thank you. Battery, Natalie. So, wait. As far as the presentation, we can make, make this a ma matter of the record right now. But this isn't going to support what she, what she's looking for. She needs to go to that other meeting. Is that, is this meeting. This, no. I need you guys to propose that to the MEA meeting. Well, I have a couple of questions. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you said that you went around and you spoke with some of the people. Can you use your mind? Oh, I'm so sorry. How do I turn mine back on? There's a button on the very bottom of it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm ex-military too. I lived in Annapolis and Boston and all that, so I understand all of this. Um, so a couple of my questions are, when you say you stop, you've talked to some of these people, have you gone into like um, into the shops and spoke to the people that would be affected by this? Some of them, and I'm personal friends with a lot of the people who would be affected by this. Um, I've gotten to know quite a, I'm very involved in the community, so I've gotten to know quite a bit of people. And so I have talked face to face with people, um, but I also have brought it brought attention to it through Facebook. And so I have run the Ocean Springs Historical Society page where I share a lot of history stories, and I did present it on there. And the majority of people were for it. There were some people who were concerned with having restrictions on their private property. Well, that would be my next question, yeah. would be everything you said is positive is great, but being on the preservation 
um, society, you're going to have a lot of restrictions that are going to be affected by businesses and that sort of thing. So my question, while the positive is great, was the negative also presented? And because there's a list. Okay, you're gonna have to. Yes, I, I've, I mean, I feel like I have really got to know the historic guidelines, and so I'm fully aware of all those things. And I, I have you are, but I'm not asking you. I'm asking yes, people. Yes, I have shared. I have shared that with people, and that I have explained what it means. There's also false information that people think are in the historic guidelines that aren't. Um, we were talking about paint color, and I did find a section on some paint color after I had talked to you, but it didn't specify the paint color, but it did say it needed to be cohesive to historic paint colors, but there's no specific colors. But that was a concern. I felt like people were like, we don't like being told what to do. But I also heard that right now, people feel like the city is telling them what to do. So. Yes, but that is the thing with historic districts is it does limit people and their guidelines. So that is a concern and that is something that I think majority of people are okay with, but yes, there are some people who would not be okay with that. So they represent, uh, this goes next to the city. So, I mean, if they're not happy right now with the things going on, when, if this was to get adopted, they're going to come back in front of these mm -hmm. folks and it's still going to end back up with the city. What do you mean? Well, I'm saying when you said they're not happy or they feel like the city's trying to tell them what to do, if they all get adopted in this, did anybody explain to everyone in the different areas and downtown what would change? I mean, a lot of these communities. I'd be happy to spread that that all that information before that meeting it to whoever I can. Yes, I would be happy to do that. Because I think it would take a lot of signatures. And I a do lot think, of these well, I do think. Yes, that sounds considerate, but that's definitely not the procedure that has been taken for historic districts. The historic, for a change in historic district is really not up to the people, even though that's considerate. Um, majority of people have been for it, but it's up to y'all. It's up no, to we you don't to make that. The districts. <laughs> what? It's in your. It's in the description and the guidelines that this is the historic preservation commission's mm -hmm. job to make this decision and to present it to the board of aldermen. I would not. I would not do that at this time. I would not do what? I wouldn't put this in front of the board at this time. Why not? Because I think there's too much already going on right now. I just think that it would. I think for you to get some traction and to possibly get what you want, I think putting it there now would not get you. I think it might be the best time to do it. Yeah. I think right now is what the we have to lose in the meantime. We don't speak from the floor. I do think that right now is the best time to do it because right now people are passionate about history, so I would I would request huh? that it happens sooner than later. I have that no that idea. would be up to this board, and I don't, I don't know if people on social media can hear me or not, okay. so I don't know. But I do like everyone. I like everything in the open. I don't want anything to be a secret from anyone, but I, I do, just don't think. and so that's me. So I will present to this as much as I can what's in the guidelines so people know what they're in for, so that people can have a voice and express that they are not. I think my only, not my only, one of my main reservations, is I agree with what you're saying in terms of us preserving. I mean, unfortunately, where we live, we've lost so many buildings due to hurricanes and all of that. And I'm not arguing any of those points, and I agree with that. However, I have my own hesitation having one person speak for such a huge group that's coming across here. I, I personally don't want to make a decision based on one person saying I've talked to people and some say yes and some say no. I'm not I'm not willing to do that. Okay, I, so I agree what, with what you're saying. So, I'm then, just not. so then how can I get all these people to come to you then so that they can tell you so it's not just from one person? How would you suggest me doing that? Well I suggested maybe you would want to you know I, if it was me mm -hmm. I would you know kind of explain this is what this will entail and then have the business owners and whatever to put the name of their business and their signatures if it was made. And their address. So, that's, what I'm so, that's, so that's, that's not a requirement. So I'm what? just wondering that where that comes from. Just so that we know. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing to make petitions. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm okay. saying that I, do know, I mean, I have some business owners in here right now that are downtown, so I know who would like it. Um, but also, because it's not just me, one person. I think there's a whole room here that's more than well, well, that's, that's 15, um, 20. <laughs> but so do, I mean, you live, do you live in this historical district? No, I don't. But I am okay. there a lot. And if I did live in it, I would 
definitely be all for this. <laughs> we're we friends. We, we are. are. And we are the history of the house that just got. And has a business agenda. My husband has a business in where I want it to be. So yes, in a way I do. My husband has that. So I don't think that I'm the minority, but I'm happy to prove it. Um, also, yes, we've lost a lot of historic buildings to storms, like you pointed out, but there's a few left. There are oh, some course. that are still here, and those are what I want to protect. They're the ones that are here still. And I mean, you're so, concerned about the ones that are, are not protected today. That are not protected today, and the ones that I want to continue doing that, but I also want any new structures that are built to adhere to guidelines so that we're saving the charm. Because that's the thing, is there's all these plans to change our downtown, yet we take so much pride in the charm of the town, but they're not doing anything to preserve the architecture of our history and who we are. So I'm fine with growth and development, but can they adhere to the same guidelines that's bringing our tourists, our tourists here and why people are wanting to stay here? That's what I want, is new construction to adhere to the guidelines. It, it, it's, not a quick, it's not a quick fix. It's exactly, not, so let's start now and you start process. It's not, it's not <laughs> a, a quick fix. So the advice I was giving you was to help you make more traction I have and lots of tractors. Yeah, I know lots of people who I, I think the traction is good right now. So, so I'll. So, what do I need to do? Get people to the board of aldermen meeting. What's the best way to do this? Well, we don't have an attorney here tonight. I'm not really. <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell this group, and I don't know about Wade, but I'm not going to. Uh, I don't know how this board feels. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable making. I don't either. think they're going do to. Do you make have the historic guidelines? Any of you have those in front of you? No, we don't. We don't you bring don't, them to the meeting. refer to those in these meetings? Yes, yes but we don't bring them to the meeting. No, we don't bring them to the meeting. Yeah, we okay. okay. All right, so first. And they've allowed you to speak. They know what you want. I appreciate that. Yeah. I just if don't, you I want don't to know. give them a presentation, and I, did you bring a presentation for them to take home with them? I have one. I can, I can email it. Okay. I don't have extra. That's fine. If you want to email that. Um, so it was it was my, I thought the, the, the presentation was going to be paper also, so it could be made a part of the actual. I mean, I got actual... all the maps and everything and what I wanted, but no, and my, what I speak spoke, I didn't do. But yes, I did in the email and everything with Carolyn. I attached what I wanted and all my maps. Now, let, me say, let me say something here. They would have to make a motion to make this part of their minutes. Just because you stood up and handed paper out doesn't do that. Okay. So, that would be up to them. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to say. So um, I, I, I don't have a problem. We can certainly vote on it, but I don't have a problem allowing you a little more extra time to put something together and then include it in the minutes if there's no opposition from the person who yeah, prepared. I can give you the paper right now. Uh, well, if you're going to present something, I would like to give you a little bit more time. to. This is my presentation. I just presented. That's what I want. So that's what you want, right? Okay. Yes. So then we, if you don't mind, if we could have that. Absolutely. And make it a part of the record. Is that all you want in the record? Plus everything I emailed, yeah. I think it's premature to vote on it. Do you have it? Well, I, I certainly don't intend on voting on something over a, a presentation right now. I'd like everyone to have an opportunity to look at it, and then we can talk about it at, a, at, at the next meeting or the following meeting to sit there and see. Be the one who does who Melissa's her and doing the minutes. I don't know how this works. It looks like you have it, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, normally you would. I'm sorry. Normally you would. You would present one to each of the board members, and then they would either. Uh, at this point, all they're doing is allowing you to put that in the minutes. Okay. Correct. Presentation. So yes, I, I've been asking my alderman since February, and he's told me he'll introduce me himself to you. And so I never knew about this. Who's your alderman? Ricky Audemont. I don't even know how to say his last name, right? But I have asked him since February, and every month followed up. Finally, someone, a friend, told me I can fill out a form and turn it into the planning commission. So I did that on August 11th, and then. Urban Rural Plan came out on the 21st, and I was like, what? I've been trying for seven months, and maybe this could have prevented it. I don't know. Maybe it's not going to be voted on, but I wanted to try. And then now I'm here, finally. <laughs> so that's all I know. I don't know how politics works. I'm not a politician. I just want to say Ocean Springs. <laughs> so, I, I <laughs> and that's great to put this in the, in the matter for public record, but I'm certainly not going to vote on something that's been presented here over 15 minutes that's 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 fine. going to affect the entire town yes. with what you're showing right now. That's fine. So, I, but, just, uh, I didn't understand. I thought that was Certainly, okay. most certainly, I'd take it into the public record, and then at, at a later time, we can talk about it. We can bring it up. 
bring it up at a future meeting. Yep. Uh, again, like Ruth said earlier, the um, the comprehensive plan, new new comprehensive plan being worked on. That is the perfect avenue to Two. incorporate that into it at that time. Uh, I mean, there's many ways to to approach this. Well, I'm not, not going to go into the details right yeah. now about it, but uh, we can certainly discuss it. In a well, meetings. if we can discuss it at a future meeting, that would be good. And I don't know. See, I don't know what happens now. Is anyone else allowed to? Well, we're not going to debate it all night. Obviously, yeah. these people support you, so we don't need them all to get up and say that. I can ask them to raise their hands if you want to. Someone can vote to it. I'd be good to. Well, <laughs> but it's not going to be. Like you said, it's really not going to be up to the public. I mean, public. Yeah, we're interested, but at this right. point, this is the very beginning. This is right. Not, yeah, this is the start. Yeah. All right. All that's going to do is these. These nice folks sounds like they're going to let you uh, add this to their minutes, and then we can make sure they all get a copy of it, Perfect. and then they will study that. You will be welcome to come out to the Civic Center if you want to bring it out there, and, and you know, should do that. Uh, he, what would happen out there, Wade? Would he even take that since that's not the, the city standing? I mean, he, um, the whole purpose of the meeting on the 20th is to get input, yeah. and I think uh, if you want to have copies. For, uh, you want to come out to the record at that time? Uh, that's an opportunity to do, to do that. Thank you. Yeah. He, uh, that will be held by the consultant, and Wade, Mr. Wade will probably be there. Uh, so, who do I send all that information to? Well, you, you go out there the, oh, that night. Well, you'll just go out. Right, there won't be a presentation like that. There's going to be like round tables. So he has, there's going to be a, a presentation, and um, at the, as part of it, He's going to have his their email address. Our email address also will be part of the presentation. So, but you guys were saying you wanted all my plan. I just presented. So how, who do I, how do I get that to everyone? Uh, uh, if you'll hand it all to Vicky. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to make sure that these folks all get one. We'll email them all one. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. That's it. Anything else? No. I just have one question. It's driving me nuts. Chelsea? Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Is that representation up on the board right now? Are you representing that that's the. That's Ocean an idea, Spring but I'm happy to hear. But that's, your, that's more along the lines of what you propose. Yes. 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 But I don't think it has to be that. I think that that was just an idea, but I'm happy to go back and forth and have you. Got, you are the expert. You're the commission. And so no, that's just me saying I like this, but yeah. you are the ones who need to okay. make the I, I, I just want to make sure I think. Yes. Because it's mm -hmm. not an accurate map. This is the I ask that. Yes. Thank you. All right. We have no administrative items. All right. So if I can get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That's, and I don't think I don't think they've taken into account.